do I have a treat in store for you today. But before I talk about these beautiful new products, first let's talk about today's video and how I'm going to show you how to fix a very common problem with Dutch pour paintings once they are dry. And then I'm going to teach you how to create a beautiful bling bling blowout. So let's get started. Hello, my friend. Welcome back to another video. So first, I want to show you some new products that I got. Oh, my goodness. These glow-in-the-dark paints and powders that can be used for acrylic pouring, they can be used for resin art, they can be used for mixed media, come from Win Modern Art. They are called Lux Glow Powders. And then, like I said, they also have the paints you do not need a black light for these to glow. I'm so excited. They charge from the natural daylight. And this is them after sitting in the sun all day at nighttime. I am going to be showing you more with these products next week. So make sure that you are subscribed to see that video and make sure your notification bell is on. They come in a ton of pretty colors. They also have all types of glitters at this company. I'm going to put the information in the description for you. I do have a discount code for them, but I wanted to get these out there to you because I was super excited to find out that you didn't need a black light for them. So literally for acrylic pouring, you can just sprinkle them on top of your wet acrylic pour. And I'm going to show you some pictures at the end of this video uh, where this technique was done. And right now I'm just showing you a couple of the new glitters I got from them. But again, I'm going to show you more about these next week. So make sure you are subscribed. Okay. But let's talk about today's video. Who remembers this Dutch pour that I did last week? Well, if you were here with me last week, you remember it. There is a common problem with Dutch pours. You put down this beautiful, vibrant paint, you blow them out, and sometimes you end up with these areas that have no color in them. Like that petal I just blew out. You'll see there's no color in that petal. And the reason why that happens is because the paint just doesn't stretch far enough. So you'll see here as I do the close-up of the video, I'm sorry, of the painting I did last week, there were areas that you have some lacing, but there's no color in it. And I don't like that. It makes the Dutch pour look weird. So in today's video, I'm going to show you a very simple way to fix that. And then I'm going to teach you how I create my bling bling blowouts. That's what I call them. A lot of people always ask me how I do this. And I'm going to show you here today how you can create a Dutch pour that looks like it's got a ton of little diamonds sparkling all over it. So you can see here, I had quite a few areas where there's just no color. I'm going to tell you why that happens and how I fix it now. So first, let's go over fixing. It is extremely easy to take the same colors that you thin down to pour your Dutch pour and hand paint them back into those areas that are missing color. So, for example, this petal here, and I apologize for the lighting, black and sunlight plus black and nighttime is just impossible to film sometimes. So, anyway, you can see here that petal, there's some purple there, but there's no colors flowing through it. So, what I do is I take some of my colors and I very lightly swoop them back in with a paintbrush. Look at your Dutch pour. Look at the way the colors are flowing. Is there Are there areas that are more, let's say, blocks of color with a little veining of some green going through? Or, you know, are there some major lines going through? Is there an area where you just want it solid? 
you can see here what I'm doing. I'm just using the same colors that I thinned down to pour the, the Dutch pour with. And I'm just painting them back into the painting. It's very simple, very easy to do. And once I was done with this, it made a world of difference. Now this little petal here, I chose to lightly just tap in some of that orange. And then I put a little bit of uh, red in, I believe maybe lighter yellow or the darker yellow. I'm not sure right now. <laughs> I forget what colors I used there, but... Yeah, it, it's really simple to do. And even the lacing parts, you can take your paintbrush and just blot in a little bit of color inside those, those little openings of the lacing. You'll see me do it here in a second with the gold on this part. But now I've got the light adjusted in my house here and uh, you can see things much better. I apologize about that. Um, but yeah, you can definitely do this to any acrylic pour painting, but more specifically, I notice it happening on the Dutch pours. And the reason why that happens is it could be multiple things. It could be A, you didn't have enough paint. It could be B, that your recipe that you're using is eating up your color and therefore you're losing a lot of it. Or it could be C, you put down enough paint, but you blew a majority of it in one direction and didn't have enough to get it on the other side when you went to blow. But I assure you, I did not do anything complicated here. I just touched up certain spots. I fixed my sides. Also the edges, the corner there, it's imperative that you brush those down again because a lot of times when the paint dries, you can see through it. And then once I filled that all in, you can see how much more vibrant it is now from when it first dried. I went back with some clear glue and some beautiful glitter from Win Modern Art. And I only hand painted that onto the colored part of the Dutch pour. I didn't go anywhere near the black sections. When I tell you this painting came out phenomenal in the end, and you will see it dry, it's just absolutely stunning. My beautiful and stunning friend, Amy, said to me, <laughs> she said, it looks like a rainbow on fire. I said, well, you know what? You're kind of right. So we're calling this one fire rainbow, but uh, it just looked absolutely gorgeous. But anyway... I brushed on two coats of this glitter concoction. I brushed on one coat, let it dry, came back about five hours later and did another coat again, just on the colored part of the painting. Once I was done with that and I let it dry good, I came in with some KS Liquid Art Ultra UV Resin and applied that to the entire painting. One reminder, always paint the sides of your Dutch pour where the color is. You don't want to have this beautiful sparkling Dutch pour on top and then the sides not sparkle. So here I'm pointing out the areas that I hand painted in and you can see they're no longer void of color. They are more fuller looking, more brighter looking. And yeah, I just think it looks so, so much better. So let me give you some resin tips really quick. So this, as I said, is KS Liquid Art Ultra UV Resin. It's a one-to-one -one ratio resin, which means you use the same amount of hardener as you do of resin. And to figure out how much resin you need, you need to go to ksresin.com, put in the size of your canvas in their calculator, and it will tell you exactly how much to mix up. I needed 10 ounces of resin. So in one cup, I mixed up five ounces. I'm sorry, I poured five ounces of resin. In another cup, I poured out five ounces of hardener and then mixed the two together. Always pour resin into the hardener. It will be easier to mix. Also, when mixing your resin, you want to make sure your stir sticks are nice and clean. They don't have dust on them. You want to make sure that your cups are also dust free. 
I, I achieve that by keeping everything in plastic. Uh, when you're mixing, you want to make sure you scrape the bottom really good. You want to make sure you scrape the sides of the cup really good. And you want to make sure you scrape your stick off multiple times throughout the mixing process, front and back, side and side. The way I pour my resin on the canvas is like this. I pour a majority of it into the center of the canvas, almost like a rectangle shape. I reserve a little bit for the sides when it's time to coat those. Although I also coat the sides with the resin that's on the surface of the canvas, which you'll see in a minute. So pour it on and then you want to take your gloved hand and just spread it out up to the edges. You don't want to go over the edges at this point. You just want to get it up to the edges. Once your surface is covered, then you can start pushing it over the edge to try to coat the sides of the canvas as well. Don't worry about the, the resin being not level. Resin will level on its own as you're, you're letting it cure. You just want to push it all around and coat the entire thing. So you'll see here, I come really close to the edge and then I'll get a little bit to go over the edge and I'll use my glove that has the resin all over it to rub down those sides really well. And then I'll come back if I feel like it's a little too thin on the sides, I'll come back with that little bit that I reserved in the cup and just kind of pour it out along the edge of the canvas, letting it drizzle down. And then again, I'll take my hand and just kind of wipe down the sides. You'll see here in a second. As long as you follow directions and use the proper safety equipment, resin is a great and fun product to use. Now, KS resin is very very low odor. I don't smell hardly anything, to be honest with you. There are resins out there that are a little more stinkier than others. So my only suggestion to you is if you are a person that has a sensitivity to smells, you're going to want to go with a better brand resin because the cheaper ones tend to be the stinkier ones. Let's put it that way. So after you're done coating, you're going to take a torch or a heat gun. Either one will work for resin. Not the same for acrylic, but for resin, either one will work. You're going to pop all your bubbles. You're going to look in the surface for any kind of debris, any hair, lint, anything like that. You're going to pick that out with a toothpick. Then you're going to torch it again. You're going to search over the whole painting again for hair. And then you're going to torch it for the third time and do an inspection for the third time and then put it away. Come back in 24 hours and see a beautiful painting. Always torch your sides also, my friends. So here it is while it's still wet. Look at how beautiful this is. It's so vibrant now that I added that color in. And it's so fun. It's feisty. It's... It's a fire rainbow for sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun with this. I hope that it taught you something. And don't forget, these colors here that I used are glow in the dark. But these are the ones that you do need the UV light for. I was told that you don't need it. It's not been my experience that they glow without a UV light. But if you have a beautiful black light and you put it up next to this painting on your wall, holy cow. I'm going to show you what that looks like in a minute here. But first, just let's appreciate the sparkle. So let me show you the areas I fixed here, just so you know what you're looking at. I'm pointing at them for you. You can see I just blended the colors right back in. And had I not said anything, you wouldn't even notice it. It's very organic and uh, fits in well. 
So now let me show you this all dried, all cured and ready for a new home. I am in love with this painting. It is just so bold, so the, I'm just speechless to be honest with you. The pattern of the Dutch pour, the composition of it, the way it's just, it's moving. And I'm sorry about all the weird glares. The background looks funny, but it's just jet black. It's just things glaring off of the resin surface. The hand-painted designs, it's just love. And yeah, it's really, really, really pretty now. And I hope that this video helps you should you have any type of issues when it comes to your Dutch pour drying or any acrylic pour for that matter. You know I love to take an acrylic pour and alter it into a total different painting. Tons of things that you can do. So that's it for this painting, but let me show you what I've been working on because now I'm going to show you those beautiful new products that I have and just a little sneak peek, okay? I'm gonna be doing something crazy with them for next Sunday, so make sure you're subscribed and the notification bell is rung. But check out this little coral I'm doing. This is a piece of uh, wood that's a commission. I have four of them to do. Here it is with the lights off. Is that not cool? Do you know how beautiful that will look on a wall? And again, you do not need to have a UV light for these to light up at night like a lot of fluorescent paints need. So they are charged by natural daylight and I highly suggest trying them out because they are so much fun. So this is one of the corals that I made and now here is the second one. I'll show it to you with the lights off first. How cool is that? Ah, I just love it. Just love it. And I hope the owner does too. <laughs> Actually, I know she does. Here it is with just the flash from my camera on. So you could see the sparkle from the Win Modern Art uh, Glitter Collection. And again, with her products, you can do an acrylic pour and literally toss some of this powder on the wet surface of that pour and have it light up at night. Coming up next here is a image of a painting that Victoria from Wynn Modern Art made doing just that. She put down a black base of acrylic paint, threw the powders on the wet surface, and then once it was dry, did the trees on the front there. Beautiful. She also did this ocean where during the day it looks like this, but then at night, when you turn the lights down or the lights go out, uh, it glows because she laid some of that powder right around the shoreline. So it's very versatile, very easy to use. And like I said, she also has a paint so that you can paint, brush paint. Uh, here are some glasses that she did using acrylic ink and just sprinkling on a little bit of that powder. How beautiful are those? Make sure you check out winmodernart.com. And I really want to thank you for joining me today. I love you all. Thank you so very much for joining me. Let me show you this Dutch pour now with a black light because these here I used the fluorescent vivid intense paints. So as I said, some have said that they glow with the light. I have not experienced that. So I'll leave that up to you to decide. But either way, they're beautiful. Check out the description for all the information on all the products. And until the next time, my friends, happy pouring.